uh, hey guys uh, welcome to a new channel uh, so this channel was mainly designed or developed uh, to teach about two basic uh, science one is about plants and another thing is about animals and human beings okay so basically it's like a biology uh, it's like a biology uh, video channel okay so we are first officially kick starting a new series on plant breeding okay so this video is mainly for those who are trained for upsc agriculture optional uh, and as well as uh, for those who have taken a uh, botany as their um, optional uh, syllabus okay and also for those who are trying ifos exam uh, uh, this will be pretty handful okay so we'll just move into the uh, topic proper okay so self incompatibility so what is self incompatibility okay as the uh, name itself suggest it is nothing but failure of the pollen grains to fertilize within the own plant okay so botanically it is like a failure of the pollen grains to fertilize the same flower or other flower of the same plant okay so it's basically nothing but failure of the pollen grains to fertilize within their own plant okay and also it can be said as uh, it's like a failure of the pollen tube to penetrate the full length of the style and affect fertilization so basically fertilization is not affected so that is what is called as self incompatibility okay so what is the main impact of self incompatibility is that it produces allogamy that is it promotes allogamy allos different and gamy is like a reproduction so so different types of characters are reproduced through allogamy uh, so it prevent autogamy and promotes an allogamy so this is one of the main advantages of self incompatibility and uh, more than 300 species belonging to 70 families uh, exhibit this phenomenon called as uh, self incompatibility okay and then uh, so uh, so how the self incompatibility or non fruitfulness or failure of the fruit uh, sitting may occur okay so we are basically seeing how incompatibility occurs okay so pollen grains that falls onto the uh, stigma fails to germinate okay fails to germinate this is first thing okay even though uh, so this is a stigma uh, so even though the pollen grains falls it fails to germinate okay and the next thing is so even though the pollen grains germinates the pollen tubes fails to enter inside the stigma okay this is the second thing and third thing even though the pollen tube enters into the stigma the growth is very very slow okay so if the growth is very slow means uh, there is no fertilization because uh, because uh, at, the, at that rate uh, the egg cells would have already undergone degeneration okay and then finally it's like uh, even though the fertilization is affected the embryo degenerates at a very early stages okay so there is no chance of uh, fertilizations uh, uh, leading to uh, embryo generations that takes place in self incompatibility okay and the next thing is uh, 1954 uh, lewis a scientist suggested as a uh, various classification of self incompatibility okay so he just gave up a uh, system like uh, there are two types of systems uh, for incompatibility one is heteromorphic system and other is homomorphic system okay so heteromorphic system is nothing but uh, it is composed of two types one is diastyly and another is tristyly okay we'll uh, we'll look about these two concepts uh, later in the series and then uh, the second thing is about homomorphic system homomorphic system is uh, is, uh, or, uh, is is by two types one is gametophytic control and another one is sporophytic control okay so here it is so heteromorphic system so in this system uh, as the name itself is suggested there is a heteromorphic that is there is a variation in the morphology okay so difference in the morphology of the flower so difference in the morphology of the flower so example uh, in species like primula there are two types of flowers primula is actually like primrose okay uh, there are two types of flowers one is prim pin and thrum okay one is pin and thrum so you can see here so the uh, uh, the right side is the pin flower you can see pin flowers have long style and short stamen so they have long style and short stamen okay and they have short stamen while thrum flowers have a uh, short style and long stamens so you see uh, short style and long stamens okay so this situation is referred to as diastyly okay so there is also some tristyly in the species like uh, lithrum uh, in such cases uh, the style of the flower may be either short long or medium that is there are of three kinds actually okay so in case of diastyly the only compatible mating between is these two flowers okay so mating always happens between pin and thrum it can never be happen in pin alone okay so so uh, so this is what uh, diastyly is all about
and then uh, so looking into genetically so we have two types of flowers one is spin flowers and thrum flowers okay so thrum is actually produced from ss that is an heteromorphous allele okay whereas a pin flask is by a recessive allele that is a small ss okay so this important point to be noted for incompatibility reaction okay so the incompatibility reaction of the pollen is always determined by the genotype of the plant producing them okay so genotype of the plant producing them so you should know this point okay so uh, uh, so you could see here uh, in this allele allele capital s is dominant over s okay and then uh, the pollen grain produced by the pollen flowers uh, will be always recessive in genotypes as well as in incompatibility reaction okay so they have a uh, two small s and the genotype will be obviously in a small s alone there is no chance of being a, a dominant allele okay so the pollen produced in the thrum flowers would be of two types so but whereas here you could see these two genotypes okay one is capital s and small s but all of them would be uh, s phenotypically okay uh the male the male between a pin and thrum plants would process would produces uh, uh these two progenies okay so if you cross these two varieties that is a uh, uh then heteromorphic allele and a recessive allele you get the progenies as the same that is one heteromorphic progeny and a homomorphic progeny allele okay so the system of the system is of little importance in crop plants uh, and it uh, occurs in sweet potatoes and buckwheat etc okay so this is a homomorphic system okay so in this homomorphic system you see that uh, the incompatibility is not associated with the morphological differences among the flowers okay so the incompatibility reaction of the pollen may be controlled by genotype of the plant on which it is produced okay uh, that, that is called as sporophytic control or by its own genotype that is gametophytic control okay so when the influences occurs in the uh, pollen grain it is called as a gametophytic okay but when it is on the genotype of the plant on which it is produced okay on the plant on which it is produced it is called as a sporophyte uh, so the next thing is gametophytic system okay so the first it was discovered by two scientists one is east and mangles in 1925 in nicotiana sandre uh, nicotiana sandre is nothing but a tobacco plant uh, the next thing is uh, incompatible reaction of the pollen is always determined by its own genotype and not by the genotype of the plant on which it is produced uh, then uh, it's like uh, genetically the incompatibility reaction is determined by a single gene having multiple allele uh, it occurs in a uh, like trifolium nicotiana lysopersican solanum and petunia so you see that uh, the incompatibility reaction is always determined by a single gene having multiple allele okay so in order for a incompatibility reaction to take place no in order for a, in a fertilization to take place the allele should never be the same okay so we'll see that in the upcoming slide so here you see okay uh, here you have the female allele as s1 and s2 and the male allele that is the pollen grain as s1 and s2 um, so both are like similar uh, here you have s1 here you have s2 and both you have here so there is no chance of fertilization to take place it is completely incompatible so the cross between s1 s2 and s1 s2 is always incompatible that is fully incompatible so whereas in this case you have s1 s2 at the bottom and you have s1 pollen green okay so this time um, it never uh, this type of uh, this side will never go uh, fertilization whereas you have s3 here so there is a chance of partial fertilization to take place so this is called partially incompatible that is one half is not uh, is not compatible with the fertilization so it is partially incompatible or you can also say that is partly fertilized the third thing is you have s1 s2 below and you have two different types of uh, allele that is s3 and s4 so all fours are different uh, so you have a complete fertilization to take place As I said earlier in the gametophytic system, the self incompatibility is always by the genotype of the plant on which the pollen is produced. Okay, so whereas in gametophytic system, it is by the uh, genotype of the pollen. Okay, so you see the here you see the incompatibility reaction of the pollen is always governed by the genotype of the plant on which the pollen is produced, not by the genotype of the pollen itself. So. Um, 
so in a sporophytic system the alleles may exit to exhibit uh, phenomenons like uh, dominance co-dominance sorry for the spelling mistake uh, and then a uh, competition okay so consequently consequently there will be a uh, much more complex incompatibility relationships so the main thing you need to know is that uh, it is always government by the genotype of the plant on which the plant on which the pollen is produced okay so in general the number of s alleles is considerably larger when compared to a sporophytic system so the the, the number is very much uh, larger than in gametophytic so that is why you have all these phenomena like dominance co-dominance or a competition and uh, there's much more in com uh, complex incompatibility relationships uh, so uh, you need to know a topic here okay so s1 s2 the pollens carrying s1 or s2 allele would behave as s1 uh, if s2 is dominant okay and the, if there is no dominance both will behave as s1 plus s2 so it's like similar like s1 equal to s2 okay so wherever you see s1 you see it as s2 also okay so uh, s2 pollens produced from s1 s2 parent will never germinate on s1 and s3 okay so because s1 is similar to s2 s1 equal to s2 okay so uh, so another example is like a s1 s2 pollen okay uh, will never germinate with any of this combination because uh, yeah, you have a S1, uh, S1, uh, S2, S2 and uh, another thing is S2. So if you have any pair, if there is any similarity between the uh, between the allele of the pollens and any one similarity with the stigma, they will never germinate. Okay. So 100% germination will take place if S1, S2 pollens is crossed with S3, S4 and S3, S9. Okay. So you don't have any S1, S2 here. Okay. So this is one of the striking feature of a sporophytic system. And finally, what is the significance of self incompatibility? So what is the use of uh, the self incompatibility? So it affects so it effectively prevents self pollination so as a result it has profound effect on uh, breeding approaches okay so and some of its objectives are uh, it's like uh, in self incompatible fruit trees that is it is necessary to plant two cross compatible varieties to ensure fruitfulness okay so two different varieties uh, example prim and trum should have should be planted okay so further cross pollination may be poor in adverse weather condition uh, reducing fruit set so therefore it is very very desirable to develop uh, self fertile forms in such cases self fertile form in such cases so this is first point and next thing uh, it is uh, its objective is also to you know, use in some breeding schemes uh, like uh, development of some hybrids etc okay the third thing is self incompatibility may be uh, used in uh, hybrid seed production also so these are the basic uses or these are the basic significance of self incompatibility so this topic is very much asked uh, in uh, uh, exams uh, in 2014 it was asked in the upsc mains itself okay so uh, so this is brings the end of the topic to a conclusion uh, i hope you uh, enjoy this lesson uh, so keep subscribing or keep liking this channel for more more and more videos okay so thank you so this is my first video actually in youtube uh, you may find it some uh, maybe some reputation of the words uh, maybe by time and practice uh, maybe i'll get uh, rid of those mistakes okay so thank you cheer